Welcome back, Bucktooth Buckos. Old Man Top coming at you today with our week six match against Chimpact in the Philadelphia Scissors. The battle for Pennsylvania is going on now. So if you're excited, please go hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. If you're not excited, hit that dislike button. It helps me out a lot. But, um... I'm going to do a little bit of info before this match starts. Um, we had a late game DC, which is why you are going to see the majority of this is Chimpak's side. Because he had it recorded live, we didn't have time to do a recreation, and the details I'll cover at the end. I don't want to get tied up in that before the match. But you're going to see it from his side, which is why we're looking at my team. His team is Politoed, Cofagrigus, Blastoise, Scolopede, Steelix, and Celebi. So that's what he had, and we're going to do a really quick, hey, this is what happened and why some of the things happened. Um, this week was insanely busy for me. Uh, the only day we were able to battle is Saturday, and it happened Saturday night, and I'm recording this Sunday morning before it gets uploaded, so yippee. Work seven days straight. 3 eighths and 4 twelves. Finish up this morning, wash my hands, look down, and someone had used the men's room sink apparently to clean up their manscaping, and there's a bunch of you-know-what curly hairs in the sink, which uh, made me very unhappy. Um, this week, I had nearly no time to prepare. This is probably the worst prepared I've ever come for a match, and I apologize for that. This is probably going to be a terrible narration and I hope you guys bear with me to the end um my wife was hospitalized this week and had two days off of work with a severe sinus infection I was in the hospital a day this week because of an infection I have in my leg which is now under control and my wife is better so uh, the infections are gone so that is bueno but that just took up so much of our time uh, as well as you know stuff and things so let's get into the match we've talked for two and a half minutes already so let's rock and roll so this is our team the team we brought mega pidgeot hip out on licky licky exadrill tentacruel and as elf we're gonna leave with as elf after looking at his team it uh just outright outspeeds everything with the scarf he doesn't have tornadus t uh which was the fastest thing on his team which we had to prep our speed tiers around um, next fastest thing I believe is Scolipede. Yeah, that's definitely next fastest thing. I'm gonna have that speed boost. He's gonna leave with Cofagrigus. I don't have anything to do, the, do to this, so I'm just going to straight up U-turn out of here. And this is live. It's gonna be weird talking over this uh, while we're waiting for things to happen. But anyways, like I said, I just got home, so, you know, we're gonna eat during this. Cup unhinged via Pokemon battle. This is going to be a good one. So as I said, I just straight up clicked U-turn and we're waiting for him to make a decision on what he wants to do. Probably seeing how much damage his Shadow Ball is going to do. Seeing whether or not he can live one. And you know, stuff of that nature. Probably trying to figure out whether or not we're a Scarf lead, whether or not we're a Setup lead, etc, etc. He probably just wants to break our Sash. We are going to go for the U-turn there. And I'm enjoying lovely pasta salad. I know what you're thinking, Top. Why are you eating pasta salad for breakfast? Well, this is like dinner for me. So this is actually probably just going to be a light snack because I'm a fat boy. But anyways. I'm just going to U-turn out here. And I take a minute to decide. And odds are he's either going for the Will-O-Wisp. Set up with the Calm Mind. Or straight up for Shadow Ball. We're going to go right into Lemonhead. Uh, thinking Shadow Ball is coming. We do have that heal bell in the event he does burn us right away. And we get a little bit of information turn one for absolutely free. And that is he's leftover variant. Uh, probably not completely physically defensive, so probably specially defensive. And he's going to go for the Will of Us Pier, uh, reassuring me the fact that he is most likely specially defensive. We're gonna go for the knockoff here. That didn't do a lot because we're burned and uh, defense is terrible. Our Oblivious changes to Mummy. I really wanted to rank Cloud9 this week, but unfortunately, Cloud9 and uh, Heal Bell 
and Wish are non-compatible moves, which just made me sad face. So it'll take a minute to decide what he's going to do here. And I'm pretty certain he's going to switch out. Because based off of this, I don't think he's going to have a lot to do to me. So... I apologize, this is the first time I've watched this since it happened last night. Because literally we battled, uh, discussed what we were going to do about the DC, and I had to go to work. Which I'll cover more at the end. So... Waiting to see what he wants to do. Or waiting to see what I want to do. It looks like he's already picked my move. I'm probably running Calx right now to see what I can and can't switch in against this thing. If I remember right, I go into Hip Out on here. Because my Hip Out on specially defensive, I don't think he's going to double burn. We're going to wait and see. I can't remember if I double knock off here predicting a switch or if I switch out myself. I can't remember. Uh, I know I don't heal bell. And I know I don't wish. And I'm pretty sure I don't use my fourth move, which is gyro ball, which was just coverage in the event he brought Mega Deancey, which he did not. This is like almost every week this season, my opponent doesn't bring their Mega Pokemon. Tom didn't bring his Mega Pokemon week one. I do switch out here. Um, Battler X didn't bring his. Oh, he going to Mega Pidgeot here. I forgot about that. Because he really didn't have much. Even if he went for the double um, Flame will wisp thing. It wouldn't matter that much. Now we're going to bring this out here. We're going to get our Mega off for more or less free. Uh, just the pain split on the switch here. And that's going to make us faster than everything on his team, barring Scarvers, if he has any. And looking over his team, things that could be Scarfed, um, maybe Celebi. It'd be really weird to see a uh, Scarf Blastoise, possibly Politoed. Uh, even if Steelix had a Scarf, it's not going to be faster than anything on my team. It's getting brought into Blastoise here, uh, probably Assault Vest, and that's why he brought it in. And we are going to see right here why Hank is a man, Super Saiyan Hank, busting out that Super Hurricane. And Hurricane is going to do right around a third. We're going to get Confusion the first turn, and that's fantastic. Now, um, based off of things here, we may be pausing and unpausing for a second. Okay, we are going to pause here. And because we got a late start to this match, which I'll cover later in the thing. Uh, there was an issue with some mons that were genned. We were genning the mons. We started an hour and a half late, and that put pressure on me because I have to go to I had to go to work last night, which I finished up this morning, and I had to play very very aggressively. And you're going to see that with some of these plays, I make a lot of 50-50 calls that I probably normally wouldn't. And this is one of them. Instead of switching out here, I'm just going to stay in and go for another Hurricane. Um, we didn't see Leftover, so I'm guessing this is Assault Vest. So, I mean, Ice Beam may be coming, Scald may be coming, I don't know. Uh, my guess for him staying in is it's Ice Beam, as this is probably one of his answers to this. And based on his investment, I can probably survive one. But I'm banking on the fact he's going to hit himself in confusion, and I just stay in a hurricane. So, yeah, that's what happens. So, fun and stuff. Yep, stay in hurricane. And we're going to see whether or not this 50-50 gamble paid off. It does huge damage that turn. Making me think turn one may have been a low roll based on how much more that one did which is fine we get both ends of the spectrum and the gamble pays off and I mean there's no reason for me not to stay in and hurricane again because it's gonna kill that even if it brings in Steelix Steelix can't take a heat wave after a hurricane well there's a very small chance if he's completely specially defensive with max HP that he could take a heat wave and there's no reason not for me to click that and see if he wants to 
stay in and sack this early, which is going to make it a lot easier for my Azelf, because I can hit everything neutral for Thunderbolt after that. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to uh, call what I want to do, because he's my Scarfer. And uh, what actually takes so long here, I actually calc out with max defense and max HP whether or not a heat wave will kill this. I don't gonna switch out. What the heck am I doing? Freaking noob. Oh, I'm going to Winston because Winston straight up walls this thing. Um, even if he has special attacks, I can wall this. And he's going to switch out himself. Baiting the heat wave. And unfortunately, his weather is going to pick up here, and that gives him a huge swing of momentum right now. Because he can go for pretty much any water type attack he wants. It's going to be boosted if he has it. And yeah, the only thing I have to come out to this is Tentacruel right now. And I believe that's what I go out and do. So we're going to see one of the few benefits of this, him having the weather up, is if we don't get hit out on back out, we will see whether or not he is damp rock based on how many turns the weather lasts. So that is a small benefit we are going to take away from this. And this right here, um, he's taking his time, running the command time down. Probably trying to figure out what he wants to do here, guessing on what I'm going to switch in or out. And once again this week, we bring offensive speedy tentacruel because it does work against his team. I mean, Politoed shuts it down. Cofagrigus, more or less, shuts it down. Blastoise shuts it down. Scolipede, a little bit of an issue with Scolipede if it has whatever its ground type move is. Um, Steelix pretty much one shots it with a Scald. Possibility to burn. Celebi shuts it down. I mean, even if it's an offensive Celebi, we speed tie with it, possibly, and guaranteed two shot with Sludge Bomb with our investment. And he does bring out the Celebi here, and I have Jade. And I'm really happy about this setup because I brought Rain Dish Tentacruel this week because I knew he was going to have to have the weather. Now, we're going to see whether or not he's max speed or guess at whether or not he's max speed here because we're going to get the Sludge Bomb off and that does huge damage. He's going to set up the Swords Dance. So we're still setting it at a 50-50 whether or not he's max speed. Now, I run the Calc here. And based off the damage, I don't think he's specially defensive. We're going to throw up the pause here. I don't think he's specially defensive. And I think that's going to give us a really good chance, based off how much damage that Sludge Bomb did, to kill with a Rain Boosted Scald. And even if we don't, we have a 30% chance to... Excuse me. A 30% chance to burn it. So that's bueno. Now, <clears throat> I had Celebi last season. So I know what Celebi is capable of. After the Swords Dance, the only thing that he has that will kill me if he outspeeds me is, um, which I don't think he will, he's going to have to bust out the Sucker Punch, which is an old, old, old move tutor. I believe it's 4th gen move tutor. And if he went so far back to pick that up, good for him, but it will not kill me. Even if he's max attack, adamant with um, a life orb guaranteed to survive from max health so we're gonna see what he's gonna do um like i said i run the calc i figured out that scald from this range is almost uh, i didn't know the exact percentage he had but it looked like it was under 20 and i believe that's correct for yes so wait Maybe, I don't know. My percentages aren't good seeing it like that. But that times four is 160. Yeah, good. So he is, no, that times five is 120. I don't know. I'm dumb. 
but I believe a Scald will kill. I don't remember the exact calc, but when I figured it out, I had a really, really good chance based off how much health he had left to kill. He's gonna Sucker Punch. And I'm like, okay, I'll eat that all day long. Gets crit. And I'm just like, oh. Now, I ran the calc after that because I didn't think he was gonna have the Sucker Punch and I thought I was gonna outspeed and just take him out. But he has the Sucker Punch and the crit. And I did max attack with, I don't remember what the item was, Adamant, and I survived at like, seven, I mean, 73% was a high roll, and that's just like, oh, man, so he got a really good, I don't know his exact set, and I don't want to say he got a good damage roll, but based off what I calced in the game, because I was just so upset when that happened, because I don't have an answer to Politoed now. Um, so, frick, but yeah, so that happened, and I was just like, oh no, so, we're buying the 8-ball right now, because he's knocked out the first Pokemon, and that makes me sad, because we would have covered a butt-ton of health there, because we had Black Sludge, and we had the Rain Dish, and that would have made us sit pretty moving forward to see what was going to happen. And I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do from this point because I was so confused. Well, I wasn't confused. I was just upset and running the calcs to see how, how hard that really should have hit me at plus two. So, yeah. Um, what you going to do? That's Pokemon. I guess that makes up for my destruction of Battler X's Slowbro turn one in our match. So like I said, I'm just, I'm beside myself and I'm trying not to play on tilt at this point. And I don't remember it taking this long when I did it. But I'm gonna go into, if I'm thinking correctly, make a Pidgeot. Because rocks aren't up. And barring a crit, I figured out that I would survive a Sucker Punch. Which is good. And there's no reason for me to not click on Hurricane here. Because even if he brings in Steelix, the rain is going to nullify the Heat Wave. And the stab from the Hurricane does more damage to anything he brings in. So, I'm pretty certain I just click the hurricane here. Because that's all he needs to do right now. And we are slowly whittling down the Steelix if he brings it in. So that's even good. And this is why I don't do live narrations because in between turns takes so long. He's gonna switch out. He's gonna bring in that Steelix, right? Yep, brings in the Steelix. And I'm just gonna rock another Hurricane. If he isn't Damp Rock, this turn, I believe the rain stops. And it does, so I know he's not Damp Rock. Which puts the question in my mind, I need to get some damage on him so I know whether or not he's a bulky leftover set. So I know whether or not he's an Assault Vest set. It'd be weird for him to run into Assault Vest users but it's a possibility to something like a Pidgeot. Because like I said, he doesn't have a lot on his team to do that. So, I'm down one Mon. I have a Mon burn. And we're sitting here with this Steelix in front of us. And me with Mega Pidgeot. And we are just, if I'm not mistaken, go for the Heat Wave here. Or we switch out into Licky Licky, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I don't go into Winston because I don't want to do the exact same thing I did last time and get predictable. I'm gonna bring out the Blastoise. I go for the Heat Wave. That isn't gonna be enough to kill, which makes me sad because now he's gonna be able to get off if he has it, 
the Aqua Jet, and I'm gonna have to finish it off with Hurricane. So, I should have played smart there, and known he wasn't gonna stay in, and it would have saved me that much damage on my Mega Pidgeot. Not that that's gonna come into play, I don't think, in the long run. Well, I'll have to wait and see. So that goes down, and if I'm not mistaken, this is where he's going to bring out... Does he bring out Politoed this time? I think he does. He does, he brings out Politoed. And I'm on some calcs. And I still don't know what he is. But I run some calcs, and I think the worst thing he can do to me is a hurricane, which I can survive at full health. Or I'm sorry, a hydro pump based on his investment. I'm pretty like I said, pretty sure I can live one at full health. Um, if he's bulky, I can especially live one at full health. And I just click roost here to see what he's gonna do, thinking maybe he might be packing the ice beam or something like that for coverage on my team, but the water spam just destroys my team now and I don't really have a really good switch in. So like I said, I'm just gonna go for the roost here as a rel- no, I don't. What the heck is going on? Going to Lemonhead. Ah, okay. And he is going to Hydro Pump. I'm way too far ahead of myself. That does a ton of damage. Ton of damage. I'm like, okay. So I have Lemonhead here. And we still have no damage on this Politoed. We don't have the slightest clue what its item is yet. But that Hydro Pump did quite a bit of damage. We think it's definitely have some special attack investment. So it's possible he specs. And I don't know. I'm still scratching my head trying to figure out what he does, what he is. But with the rain up, the percentages were just, I wasn't 100% certain yet. I'm gonna switch out here, and we're gonna go for the knockoff, because if he stays in and misses a hydro pump or doesn't kill me with whatever he does, the knockoff's gonna get rid of whatever item he has, but unfortunately, it is just going to take, I mean, not unfortunately, he brings in Steelix, who takes that exceptionally well. And we are just able to knock off the leftovers, which is going to stop this thing from recovering. And he's going to help Mega Pidgeot take this thing out in the long run. I'm going to set up the wish here, and I don't want to say I was surprised I was faster, but I am a negative speed nature. So Gyro Ball will hit harder, and I still outran him. But then again, Steelix has like negative 5 base stat in speed. So I don't know why I was surprised, because I should have known that. Now, I set the wish up here, and I don't know what he's going to pick, but I'm going to go into Azelf, because unless he's a lord and predicts the crunch on the switch, I'm pretty sure I can survive anything he wants to go for. And I bring out a drive, and he's going to go for the earth power. So he does have special attacks, which was very surprising to see. Now I have a drive who once again is Scarf, but I would outspeed this anyway. He's not at a range. Oh, I mean, I know he's not cussed at Barry for the crazy explosion play or anything like that. But I'm at the point where I'm pretty sure I just U-turn because I know he can't stay in here because he still needs Steelix to come in and wall Mega Pidgeot. So I'm pretty sure I U-turn here. Steelix is going to switch out. The rain is still up at this point. Is he going to bring out Cofagrigus? And I am just going to U-turn out. So, bueno. Cofagrigus is going to be out, I believe. I bring out Mega Pidgeot here. But I could be wrong. I don't remember 100% certain. I apologize, it's probably going to be the most unprofessional video I ever make in my career as a YouTuber. But I just, once again, I apologize, I didn't have time. 
I hope this is the only video I don't get... I, I have a lack of time to properly edit. Because I'm literally going to slap this thing together, schedule it, and leave for church. So I apologize that there will not be a layout or the cool sprite things that I normally do, but I usually have a day off to do that, and I didn't this week. So I bring Hang back out because I know the rain is going to stop there. And hurricaning this thing would just be fantastic. And based off of what I've seen so far, it doesn't have much for me outside of Will-O-Wisp. We still haven't seen one of the moves. Uh, gonna bring Steelix out here, and Hank's just gonna hurricane. Without the leftovers, that's really going to start accumulating damage, and it looks like it does relatively close to half of what he has left. Now, he doesn't have much he can bring in at this point, outside of Politoed, to come in on the Heat Wave. So, I really don't think he's gonna switch out this time, and he might try to play for my overprediction. And I think I was running Calx here to see if I wanted to try and roost this turn. But I ultimately just go for Heat Wave, and that is going to take out the Steelix, which is going to rack up a kill for Mega Pidgeot this week. And that's just fantastic -o. So, yeah. That's actually its second kill, because it killed Blastoise already. Now, Politoed is going to come out here. I'm like, okay. I'm still trying to figure out what the set is. And I'm just thinking, I stay in. This is the 50-50 where I didn't know what to do. Because once Steelix went down, he really didn't have an answer to Mega Pidgeot. So I'm thinking, perhaps this thing is a Salt Vest? To come in, take a hit, and kill me with Ice Beam at this range. Which was my line of thinking, where it was a bulky set with leftovers to come in, wall me out and yeah so i roost here because i ran the calx and if he was the bulky variant which i thought he was i would like i said we already knew we had some special attack investment but i took that into accum accumulation consideration when i ran the calc and thinking i was going to outspeed I would be able to get the roost off, be at full health. If he ice beamed, I'd survive it handsomely. And if he hydro pumped, we'd see the hydro pump and it was guaranteed hit because I got no guard. And we'd see what he, I would have more information. And like I said, I took a lot of time running couch right here to try and figure out what my best play was. He's gonna outspeed me. And I'm like, he's freaking scarfed man I, did, I didn't see that coming right out right right out of the left field and he just blew my mind so i gotta go out in the z drive here er, er, yeah z drive oh my lord i am too tired go out in a drive here the as elf and there's no reason for me not to click thunderbolt but i should have known at this point he wasn't going to stay in because this is his win condition right now but i want to play aggressive I didn't know if he'd predict a switch. I should have just U-turned. That was my safest play and would have set me in the best position. But I Thunderbolt. And we're going to see that Thunderbolt doesn't do nearly enough here, making me think he's almost completely specially defensive. And what I need to do here is get out to try and get the sand up and slowly whittle this thing down. Without its leftovers, I should be able to take it 1v1 with hip out on. And, yeah, stuff and things. Oh, I was just so sad. So we are going to switch out into... Oh, we go into Lemonhead right here. That's right. I switched out here to a sack to see what he wanted to do. And he's... I'm going to go down to the entry hazard. He's going to set up Toxic Spikes. We've seen his entire set. And the fact that we just lost Lemonhead there, really unfortunate because he has nothing to do to us. We completely walled him outside of the Will-O-Wisp. But now that that's happened, he set up Toxic Spikes, I can bring in Winston. Another thing that made this crit suck even more was at this point I could have just brought Tentacruel back out if I still had it. Sucked up those Toxic Spikes. And Fini Finale, that's done with. But one of the things this allowed me to do was bring Hippowdon in. Um, 
not have to worry about being burned because I was poisoned, which would let me come in. This is a a curse variant of the Hippowdon, which outside of his Politoed stands up to this team fantastically well. And I know this Cofagrius can't do anything to me at this point because I am specially defensive. And I mean, he can hurl all the shadow balls he wants, but there's not much he's going to be able to do. Right now, I really thought he was going to try and um, preserve the health of this by switching out into Celebi, uh, predicting the Earthquake. So I went for the Crunch. It's super effective here. I'm packing it this week. And even if he stays in, that's going to do a ton of damage to this Cofagrius. Even though we have no attack investment. So we are faster, surprisingly enough. And the Crunch does about 25 to 30%. We're going to get the defense fall there, and it doesn't matter if we have Mummy now or not, because the sand is already set. And he's going to pain split. So I'm like, okay. I don't know if we saw that before, but we saw it now. So we have seen all four of his moves. And I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking to myself, what is he going to do right now? I think he's going to switch. And the worst case scenario is he brings in Politoed if I tried to start setting up. And Scald just kind of runs through the rest of my team. So that's really sad. So I think that's what he's going to do. And instead of wasting my time setting up, because I think this is going to come in and start it, I just go straight off for the crunch. And we're going to see how much damage that does. And there's a hefty chunk there. And this poison damage is going to put us just below health. And from here on out, we're sitting in another 50-50. It's 3v3. We're poisoned. Exedrill isn't going to do much. And we have Azelf, who's the only thing that outspeeds everything on his team. And right here, we have a disconnection. And that's just... Uh... So here's what happened. Because this happened at the very end of the match, after I think it was about half an hour into the actual match, it put me right at the point where I had to get ready to go to work. So we were unable to recreate it. So here's what happened. Uh, we put it to the GBA coaches as per the rules, and the GBA coaches awarded the match to Chimpact. Um, we are still currently working out what the score will be. Um, there have been two things proposed so far. One, a 1-0, because we ended on a 4-3. And there was also a 6-0 recommendation, and that person can suck it. <laughs> because I don't want to take a worse loss than had I just forfeited outright because of the, uh, the issues we had trying to get this battle started on time. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. Um, great game, great play, and great prep by Chimpact. Um, he well lives up to his reputation as one of the best battlers, competitive-wise or other. And his prep was just that insane. That Scarf Polytoad caught me way off guard. And um, I will say the disconnection was my fault. I had originally planned an hour window for me to be able to get this battle done with no one in the house. So I could completely concentrate, etc, etc. But like I said, there were issues with um, genning one of the mons on a team. And that set us behind an hour and a half. Almost. And that really kind of crushed my window that I had set for this and ready to go. Um, I'm not making up an excuse. This is just what happened. Um, my wife and daughter youngest daughter had gone to see the Finding Dory movie and I had that window that that movie was played to get this match out of the way to be as least traffic as possible at my house and I'd be able to concentrate. Well because we started an hour and a half late they were home and they were using devices around the house which sucks up all the Wi-Fi which tripped my 
I don't know, my phone just vibrated, nothing came up. Which reset my Wi-Fi router, and it caused it to, um, cause the disconnection, which stinks. So, that was unfortunate. But, as I said, great game by Chimpact. I'm sure if you watch me, you watch him at least three times as much, because he's an awesome dude, and he makes great content. So, go check him out. Link will be in the description there. So, yeah, we've been talking for 35 minutes already, and we didn't even do anything much in this match. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I, again, I apologize for the lack of professionality in this video, but so much has just happened this week. Like I said, between work and seven days, the 12-hour shifts, my wife being in the hospital, me being in the hospital, and everything that's happened this week, trying to get this, the waiting an hour and a half to get the match started, and it stunk. We were both ready. We were just waiting for that mon to be created so we could get our battle underway. And it was just very frustrating. So, like I said, we were both ready. It was it was nothing in Chimpact or Eyes Control that could be done. So that was just very frustrating. It's really frustrating when something happens that's completely out of your control or ability to change. So, yep. Alright guys, let's put them on top. And we are now 4-1. Uh, once the differential in this match gets decided, um, I'll probably tweet it out. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, go ahead and uh, click the link in the description. My social media is always down there. But alright guys, this little man's up. Have to watch the rest of the matches this week to see whether or not Gym Leader Geo wins and reclaims his seat atop the division. And yeah, so... 4-2, not in a bad spot. We're going to play the Real Maril for the second time in our GBA history in Mega Mogwai. So that was a great match last time. It was a little haxy, but still a great match. Um, it finished up a lot better than it should have, even though it was haxy. So hopefully this match will be getting, and it'll be fantastic. Last time I lost, and I had to eat gazpacho. We haven't set a bet for that match yet, but I'm not ruling it out either. But alright guys, this has been on my top. Thank you for watching and sticking through to the end. If you stuck through to the end, tell me what your favorite or least favorite part of this match was and why. But alright guys, this has been on my top and we will catch you on the flip side. Peace.